Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. We're joined today by Vancouver Canucks Assistant General Manager, Emily Castonguay. Emily, first of all, welcome and thanks so much for taking the time today. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, we're going to start with questions from our local media here first in Vancouver before we transition to questions from the national media. So without further ado, we'll start with one from Jay Janauer, Global BC. Emily, congratulations on uh, on what's uh, a historic day for Vancouver Canucks fans. Thank do you. you. Want this, do you want this to be a big day for, for women in sport, for, for young girls in our country? And do you also just want to be an assistant general manager? <laughs> uh, that's a loaded question. Um, I mean, obviously it is a big day, uh, whether I, I would want it or not. I think it's a historic day um, and it, you know, it goes to show that women have a place in sports and in hockey. Um, you know, obviously I, I'm starting with the assistant general manager and, and we'll see where that takes me. Um, I've always had high aspirations in, in my career and in life in general. So uh, we'll see where that takes me, but uh, I'll start with this for now. How much did your internship with the Montreal Canadiens mean to you? And, and, and how much did that help mold perhaps the role that you're going to fit into now? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was mentored by Pierre Gauthier, who was the uh, general manager back in the day with the Canadians. Um, wouldn't call it so much an internship as much as a mentorship uh, by his part, but um, he taught me a lot. And he obviously, um, you know, I'm sure it's a big day for him too to see me here, uh, you know, get this position. Um, so I'm very thankful to him for everything that he's he's ever taught me and, and believed in me, obviously, all those years. So, um, you know, I think it's it's definitely helped me get here today and it's going to help me in my job for sure. We'll move along to Ian McIntyre, Sportsnet. Hi, Emily. Uh, I imagine you have had um, other offers or, or at least other interests from other teams. Why, why Vancouver and why this position uh, is right for you now? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, from the first conversation I've had with Jim Rutherford, um, you know, I just felt like I believed in his vision. I believed in what, you know, the Aquilini family and, and management wanted to do. Um, they wanted to build a team that was diverse, that had different opinions and that could bring different things to the table. Um, I was really, you know, impressed by everything that, that they wanted to do uh, and obviously bought into it. And, you know, Vancouver for me is just, you know, personally, I have a, a very strong relationship with the city of Vancouver for, for different reasons, which I won't get into right now. But um, personally, it's, it's just always been a place where I wanted to be and where I wanted to live. I, I actually have a, you know, a small snippet here. I have a a vision board at home that I've had um, for over five, six years. And um, on it, I had written um, a certain age and then I had written Vancouver beside it, um, you know, just because I wanted to be in Vancouver at that point in my life. Um, and I didn't know how I was gonna get there or how it was gonna happen. Um, but uh, I turned that age in, in about a month and a half. So uh, <laughs> it's always been kind of in the back of my mind and on my vision board. And, you know, whether it was as an agent or, uh, you know, as working for the NHL, I didn't know how I was going to be there, but it's pretty awesome that it worked out that way. So for me, Vancouver was a no brainer. Um, I feel they have, you know, a great young team um, that is hungry to win. Uh, and I'm just really happy to be part of, of their journey now. And, and as you know, uh, the hiring in some ways is bigger than just you and bigger than just the Canucks for what it represents. How comfortable are you being that person on a pedestal that a, a lot of people are going to be watching to see how she does? Uh, you know, I don't really think about those things. I just, you know, and, and I've never really thought about it through my, my journey, my personal journey. Um, you know, I grew up playing hockey with the boys, uh, same as them. I, you know, watched hockey, same as them. I, I played with the boys when I was young and then I played with the girls when I was older. I, I played D1 hockey on a scholarship. Um, you know, I studied business when I was in the States and then I went to get my law degree. So um, I never really thought about gender when I was going through my journey. I had a very non-binary approach to it in the sense that I wanted to do something in hockey and I wanted, um, I wanted it to 
means something to me. And I never thought, hey, you know, there's only men in this industry. I can't do this. Um, I just kind of got all the knowledge that I thought I could get to get to where I am today. And I just put my head down and did the work. Um, you know, I think if you let gender get in your way or if you let it intimidate you, that's when it will do that. Um, and I never really let that happen to me in, in my journey. So I think once you, you look at it that way, um, doors open up and if you can do the work, um, you're going to get the jobs. And so hopefully this is the start of, of just, you know, more women getting, you know, jobs in sports and in hockey particularly. Um, but for me, I just never let gender get in the way. And that was the way that I always operated. And it's still the way that I do it. We'll go next to Ben Kuzma, Post Media. Uh, congratulations. Um, you know, you're kind of considered a five-tool player. I mean, you were a player. You're an agent. You got degrees in yeah. finance and law, and, and you're with the bar. I'm just wondering, there's some vacancies here on the contract side, cap management. Do you have a particular strength? Uh, I mean, I think it takes, it takes that type of person to do this type of job. Um, like I said, I think, you know, leadership at, at the Canucks is building a, a team with a lot of people like that. And I think we're all going to come together with a common goal of building a competitive team and a contending team for many years to come. Um, you know, in any way that I can contribute to that, we'll see. Um, but, you know, I think everything that I've done in the past, you know, brings a, a certain perspective and a certain knowledge. Um, and I can't wait to, to do that with the Vancouver Canucks and, and bring what I can to the table. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, I think, you know, I have a lot of experience in different backgrounds and, and I think it'll only help me to be a more uh, complete assistant general manager for now and, and, and help the team. Aside from that vision board, which is kind of amazing, you might want to do some stock analysis. Um, <laughs> Is there anybody going I do, I do. There you go. Is there anybody you looked up to at women in sport, business side, or anybody, anybody who, who was an inspiration to you growing up? Again, I'm going to go back to the fact that I've always had a non-binary approach to everything. So the people that I looked up to were, um, were just, you know, some of my idols in hockey. They didn't have to be women or men. They were just people that were knowledgeable and competent at what they did. Um, you know, my, my favorite player growing up was Kirk Muller uh, in, in the 93 playoffs. He, you know, I think he scored a goal from the face off. And as, since then, he was kind of my player. I, I wore number 11 because of him um, growing up and in college. And all. so, I mean, in terms of like mentors, um, I mean, I've had, I've had plenty along the way. I can't name them all that, you know, there's so many, but, um, you know, they're just people that have helped me, believed in me. Um, and just gave me a chance to be who I am and, and, and have an input and, and have, have an impact in this game. I mean, I think, you know, a lot of people underestimate um, the place that women do have in this sport when, uh, when you have knowledge and, and you have the experience. Um, you know, everyone's been so good to me from the beginning. So um, I think that's just gonna continue. Next up, we'll go to Thomas Grant at The Athletic. <laughs> Hey, Emily, congratulations. Uh, Thank you. You've spoken a little bit about your experience and, and how it informs your perspective. And, and we have seen around the NHL current, uh, you know, at the moment, a, a ton of former player agents are, are being um, hired by various uh, front offices. I mean, obviously, just in Montreal last week, Florida last year. Uh, what do you think it is about your experience as a player agent that can perhaps make you effective in the new role? I think there's a lot of things um, to answer your question. There, there, there's a lot. Um, what comes to mind, I think, is, you know, for me, I think it's something that's super important. I've said that I've, I've related that to the, you know, the leadership team in Vancouver is, um, you know, I think player development and, and, you know, surrounding the players with the right resources and the right people so that they become the best versions of themselves um, is really important. And um, for me to have a human impact in this organization is super important. Um, it's something that I value and it's something that I'm, I tend to do. Um, I truly believe that your team is only as good as how your players feel. Um, and it's important to have a pulse on that and to make sure um, that they feel good and that they're you know, being put in positions to develop as players and as people. Um, 
to represent the Vancouver Canucks and, and to uh, build a championship team, you need that type of, of um, consistency and that type of culture. Um, as an agent, you know, you see players, you know, you, you start working with them at a very young age, sometimes, you know, 14, 15 years old. And so, you know, you, you witness a lot of things as they grow older and as they go up in the ranks, uh, you go through many experiences with them, ups and downs and um, you see different things. They get drafted by different teams. Some of them develop differently, um, but you kind of get a sense of what it takes and, and what, what you need to surround the players with for them to succeed. And um, I think it's something that I want to bring to the table. And it's something that I intend to do uh, here in Vancouver. And a variation on that theme, but, but among your former clients now, your now former clients is Antoine Roussel, who obviously spent uh, several seasons in Vancouver, uh, does yeah, the yeah. experience of representing a player <clears throat> who spent some time within this organization, does that give you any insight into perhaps what's gone down here in the last couple of years and, and perhaps some areas um, to help improve now that you're in a new role? Yeah, I mean, Antoine, you know, he loved the city in Vancouver. He loved the, the Canucks and he was sad to, he was sad to go. Um, you know, he had a great time in Vancouver and I think, um, you know, if there was any input that was given to me, uh, you know, I, I sure it's, it's going to help me in, in any type of way, but I think there's obviously new leadership and, and a whole new culture that's trying to be built here in Vancouver. Um, and hopefully it, it, everything goes in the right direction and, and, uh, you know, I just, I just got here. So, you know, give me some time to evaluate all those things. And um, obviously I'm, I'm here to help and, and we'll see what, what all that is. But for now, you know, my goal is just to, uh, to, to get there and, and start working as soon as possible to identify those things and, and have an impact for sure. Next up is Gemma Carson Smith, Canadian press. Hi, Emily. Congratulations. Uh, you talked about having wanting to have a human impact on this team can you expand a little bit about uh what you mean and what that looks like yeah again i think it's uh it's a, a bunch of different things and it's 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 incremental i think it's you know uh culture doesn't change overnight it's it's little things that you need to do in order for players to to feel like they're well surrounded um for players to want to be in vancouver and and whether it's from the minute they get drafted to, you know, when they're in the organization, in the minors, or, um, you know, just come here as free agents. I think we want to be a place where, you know, players want to come and, and that they feel that, you know, they're well treated and they have all the resources that they need to, to again, like I said, be the best versions of themselves. And that's what I feel that this leadership is doing, um, you know, and just, you know, hockey players are humans, you know, it's the product that's on the ice are human beings. And that's, that's super important. Um, and it's important not to forget that, you know, I think you need to put the players first and you need to listen to them and, and make sure that, you know, they have everything they need to succeed. And so that's something I'm, I'm really going to focus on. Um, and I know that the team wants to focus on that too. Obviously, you care a lot about the, the guys that you've represented over the years. Uh, what were the conversations like ahead of you taking this job uh, and, and knowing that you're not going to be their number one anymore? Uh, yeah. Emotional. Um, you know, I, I can never thank them enough. The entire group of just, you know, believing in me and giving me a chance to, uh, to be that person for them. I mean, it's, uh, they were extremely hard conversations, um, but they, you know, they were so happy for me and they were so, um, you know, supportive and they know the type of impact that I want to have on the game. Um, they know the changes that I want to bring and, um, you know, they were amazing and so supportive and, and wanted me to take this position uh, to, to continue the impact and to continue um, the change. And, uh, but it, it's hard. I mean, it's hard because I've, I've been working with these athletes for uh, many, many years and um, I'm so proud of all of them and, and they have such a bright future and some of them are, are already, you know, in, in their prime and, and doing their thing. And, um, 
you know, I, I wish them nothing but the best, whether it's the families, the players, they, they mean so much to me and uh, they always will. Um, that said, it was, it was extremely hard, hard week for me and um, really tough conversations. So. Okay, we have a couple more local questions here that we'll take care of before we move along to national media. We'll start with Karen Larson, CBC. Hi, Emily. Um, your hiring uh, is a real paradigm shift um, for the NHL. And so I'm, I'm curious, like as one of the few female agents, did you, did you face any challenges and do you expect those challenges to sort of continue at all in an NHL front office? No, I mean, I, you know, as an agent, I think you, you, you go through a, you know, very organic competition in that field. Um, you know, whether you're male or female, I think it's, it's, it's a cutthroat business at its core. Um, so I never saw it as anything, you know, based on gender, what, you know, the competition that was within that, that sphere. Um, and like I said, like, I, I just, I've always just been really well treated, whether it's with conversations with NHL GMs or assistant GMs or, you know, uh, scouting staffs or, you know, development people. Like I've just, I've always just been well accepted. I think once you, you get past that and you just start talking about hockey and, and they realize that you have the knowledge, um, you know, I think knowledge is power and they just, you know, you kind of forget that you're the only girl in the room sometimes. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's never been really hard for me. I don't know if I just choose not to see it that way and I just choose to ignore it. Um, but I think me not focusing on that has, has allowed me not to be intimidated. And, um, you know, I've just, I've always had such a good reception from everybody in the sport. And, um, you know, it's important for women that want to be in the sport to know that, that, you know, sometimes, you get intimidated, but you, you shouldn't, if you have the knowledge and you, and you've done the work, um, there's a place for you here. And, um, if it needs to start with me, then, then good. But, um, you know, for me, it's just always been my experience personally. And my other question is just a real quick one. Where, where do you live now? And I take it you're moving to Vancouver. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm in Montreal. Uh, that's, that's where I live. Um, but I will be coming to Vancouver, uh, in, you know, probably the next week or so. Um, I haven't decided that exactly. Um, I mean, still need to talk to the staff and, and see, but there's a few things I need to uh, wrap up here in Montreal, but I'll be in Vancouver as soon as I can. And our final local question now comes from Jeff Patterson with Rinkwide. Hi, Emily, congratulations on the Thank post. You. Uh, can you just maybe walk us a little bit through the process? Uh, you talked about your vision board, but who made first contact in this exchange? Did Jim reach out to you or when you knew that he was looking to round out his front office, did you pursue an opportunity? Uh, yeah, Jim uh, reached out to me um, a little while ago and, uh, you know, we had really good conversations about, you know, everything I mentioned before about what he was looking to do um, and just the leadership that he showed through that, that those first exchanges for me um, really hit home. Um, so the fact that, you know, he reached out to me and, and he felt like I could have a, an impact and make a difference uh, in what he was trying to build meant a lot to me. Um, and obviously it was a, you know, it's always a hard decision to, to leave a, a business and, and a field and a career um, and make that change. But um, at the end of the day, I think I, you know, it's something that I really believed in and I wanted to be a part of. Um, and, you know, I know that all the players that I represent are left in great hands at Momentum Hockey and, and we were a really great team there. And, you know, I'm not worried about them in that sense. And so that made it for an easier transition for me, obviously. And could you have remained in the agency game long term or was it always about trying to find a, a gig in a front office? No, you know, when I, when I went into the agency business, it was really something that I, I loved doing. Um, and I never really thought about looking past that. I, you know, I'm the type of person that likes to live in the moment and, and do the best I can in the moment. Obviously when Jim called and, and we had those conversations, um, you know, my mentality shifted a little bit just because of everything that um, the vision that he had and, and, and the role that, he felt I could play. Um, 
in this. And so, you know, it was, like I said, it was a hard decision, but, you know, I never really set out to, to do this or that. It was just about the right opportunity and the right fit for me. And uh, that's why I decided to make this decision. Moving along to national media now, we'll start with Louis Jean, TVA Sports. Bonjour, Louis. Bonjour, Emily. Félicitations. Merci. Um, vous m'avez toujours apparu comme étant une personne assez pragmatique et cartésienne. Uh, et votre travail, évidemment, parle de lui-même. Depuis 2016, vous êtes agent de joueur. Mais de faire un show comme celui-là, on dirait que l'ascension la, était extrêmement, extrêmement rapide. Je vais faire appel peut-être au côté émotif un peu plus. Comment on se sent de se retrouver maintenant dans un job aussi recherché dans la Ligue nationale de hockey après ce que vous avez accompli et ce que vous, euh, vous laissez de côté maintenant? Ouais, je me sens privilégiée, évidemment. Euh, en même temps, c'est comme tu as dit, c'est une, une décision qui a été très difficile pour moi du côté humain. Euh, parce que, évidemment, la, la, les, les gens avec qui je travaillais chez Momentum puis les joueurs avec qui je travaillais, c'est des gens qui, euh, qui ont une grosse place dans mon cœur puis ils vont toujours l'avoir. Euh, mais en même temps, euh, j'ai une opportunité de, de, de créer du changement dans, dans le monde du hockey. Puis, euh, c'est vraiment important pour moi ça aussi, puis je pense que tous nos clients chez Momentum, puis toute le, mon équipe chez Momentum comprenait ça aussi. Euh, puis ils voulaient que, que, que je prenne ce challenge-là, puis ce défi-là. Donc, euh, euh, ouais, c'est un, un bittersweet moment, comme on dit, mais en même temps, euh, je suis vraiment excitée d'être ici, puis je suis vraiment excitée de, de, de ce nouveau défi. Et si je peux me permettre une deuxième question, qu'est-ce que tu penses que tu vas pouvoir apporter dans ton nouveau rôle à cette organisation-là? Comme je disais, il y a plein de choses. Je pense que mon expérience euh, euh, à travers les dernières années euh, font en sorte que je peux apporter différentes choses. Euh, pour moi, l'impact humain est très important. Je pense que, le, je, je le disais tantôt, le, je pense qu'une équi une équipe va être compétitive et va être bonne si les joueurs se sentent bien, euh, si les joueurs se sentent bien entourés. Euh, c'est vraiment important, puis c'est quelque chose que moi, comme agente, j'ai vraiment appris à, à, à connaître les joueurs, puis à savoir ce qu'ils avaient besoin pour bien se sentir, puis bien être entourés. Euh, donc, je pense que c'est un peu ce que les, les Canucks essaient de faire de, de, de faire, de de créer une équipe autour de leadership qui va faire en sorte que les joueurs vont, vont avoir tout ce qu'ils ont besoin, puis être bien entourés pour, euh, pour être le meilleur d'eux-mêmes. Our next question comes from Kevin Dubé, Le Journal de Québec. Salut, Émilie. Félicitations. Merci. Um, juste curieux de, 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 de savoir, tu en as glissé un mot en, en anglais là, par rapport à, à, à l'histoire du, du Vision Board et tout ça, mais qu'est-ce qui est spécial pour toi um, avec la ville de Vancouver? Qu'est-ce qui fait en sorte que c'est une ville spéciale pour toi? Euh, c'est un, un petit peu une question personnelle, mais euh, euh, ma soeur est, est décédée il y a, il y a presque dix ans, de euh, façon un peu tragique. Euh, puis, euh, une des dernières conversations qu'on avait eues euh, de, dans sa vie, en fait, c'est qu'elle m'avait dit que euh, je dirigerais un jour les Canucks de Vancouver. Donc, euh, en fait, c'est la dernière conversation que j'ai eue avec elle euh, dans sa vie. Donc, euh, pour que les Canucks m'appellent, euh, ça a été un moment assez émotionnel pour moi. Puis, euh, c'est une des raisons pourquoi je me devais de considérer euh, puis d'écouter Jim Rutherford parce qu'il avait à me dire. Puis, euh, pour la partie Vancouver, il n'y avait pas vraiment à me convaincre, mais j'ai senti que, que c'était un peu l'univers qui faisait en sorte que, que, que ça m'amenait là. Merci. OK, and Kevin, if you don't have a follow-up, we'll move along to Guillaume Lefrançois. Oui, bonjour Émilie, euh, félicitations pour, euh, pour la nomination. Euh, tu en as parlé un petit peu en, en anglais tantôt de, de, de à quel point c'était difficile pour toi de, de quitter les joueurs, justement. Euh, à quoi ça ressemblait ces discussions-là? Puis disons dans le cas spécifique d'Alexis Lafrenière, parce qu'on sait que c'était quand même ton client le, euh, dont on parlait le plus, comment, comment ça s'est passé puis comment il réagit à, à tout ça? Comme j'ai dit en anglais, c'est. C'est sûr, c'est des moments super difficiles pour moi parce que j'ai, euh, tu sais, on devient une famille, tu sais, puis c'est, euh, 
tu traverses tellement de moments importants avec la famille, avec le joueur depuis, depuis qu'ils sont très jeunes. Donc, pour moi, c'est un moment très difficile puis très émotionnel. Mais en même temps, tu sais, il était tellement content pour moi, puis euh, il me supporte là-dedans, puis il, il, il voulait que, que, que je fasse euh, ce genre de, de, de transition-là pour continuer à, à, à avoir un impact dans, dans le monde du hockey, puis euh, je le sais qu'il qu reste en bas de main chez Momentum Hockey, je veux dire, on, on faisait tout en équipe là-bas, puis c'est une bonne équipe avec mon, mon partenaire, mon collègue Olivier Fortier, puis euh, tu sais, je suis toujours toute faite avec lui par rapport à Alexis. Donc, tu sais, je sais que je, je laisse tous les joueurs de momentum en bonne main. Donc, euh, pour moi, ça l'aide beaucoup la transition. Mais c'est sûr que euh, c'est des liens qui sont assez serrés. Puis, euh, je vais toujours, toujours avoir des bonnes relations avec euh, les familles et les joueurs que j'ai représentés. Puis, euh, je ne saurais pas comment assez les remercier pour, euh, pour me supporter dans cette décision-là. Là. Parfait. Euh, sur un autre ordre d'idée, euh, ton nom a souvent été associé aux Canadiens là, dans les dernières semaines quand les gens parlaient de candidats, tout ça. J'aimerais juste, si tu pouvais clarifier pour nous, finalement, qu'est-ce qu'il y a eu comme approche, s'il y a eu des approches ou s'il n'y a tout simplement rien, rien eu du tout. Bien, en fait, euh, non, je n'ai pas eu d'entrevue de, de, avec les Canadiens de Montréal. Euh, tu sais, à la base des Canadiens, euh, avaient fait une liste de candidats à l'interne pour un poste de directeur général ou directrice générale en chef. Euh, donc, ils ont décidé de faire une liste à l'interne avec des gens qui croyaient qu'ils pouvaient faire ce poste-là. Euh, puis, si je n'étais pas sur la liste, j'ai aucune prétention de penser que je devrais être sur cette liste-là. Donc, euh, euh, ils se sont arrêtés sur un choix. Euh, puis, euh, tu sais, je leur souhaite du succès. Pas autant de succès que, que, que Vancouver, mais euh, tu sais, cela dit, moi, tu sais, l'opportunité que j'ai à Vancouver, c'est vraiment celle-là que, que je voulais, puis c'est celle-là euh, par laquelle je suis vraiment emballée, puis euh, donc c'est ça, j'ai pas de... Pour répondre à la question, non, j'ai pas eu d'entrevue avec les Canadiens de Montréal. Great, we have three more questions to uh, take care of here. We'll go first to Guillaume Lepage, NHL.com. Salut, Émilie, félicitations. Euh, en anglais, tu as parlé de ton approche un peu euh, non-binaire euh, tout au long de ton parcours. Reste que tu as fait ta place comme femme dans un monde d'hommes. Euh, quel trait de caractère euh, ou quel trait de ta personnalité t'a permis de gravir les échelons et d'en arriver où tu en es aujourd'hui? Euh, je pense que je suis une personne qui est très passionnée à la base. Euh, je suis travaillante. J'ai... J'aime, je carbure au défi. Euh, en même temps, je pense que le, le, le fait que je ne me suis pas laissé intimider par le fait que j'étais la seule femme parfois dans, dans, dans mon parcours, ça l'a fait en sorte que ça ne m'a pas vraiment arrêté. Puis je ne me suis pas mis mes propres bâtons dans les roues. Euh, encore là, je pense que ça prend beaucoup de traits, de, de différents traits pour, pour faire ce genre de travail-là, homme ou femme. Il euh, faut que tu aies une passion, il faut que tu sois travaillant, puis euh, il faut, faut, faut que tu puisses vouloir gagner. Je, je veux gagner à la base, je suis une gagnante, donc euh, je pense que c'est un peu, un, un peu de tout, mais euh, homme ou femme, je pense que c'est la même chose. Est-ce que tu es consciente aujourd'hui de, de l'impact que cette nomination-là peut avoir sur les jeunes filles ou les, les femmes qui travaillent dans le monde du hockey puis qui, qui te regardent puis qui veulent graver les échelons comme tu l'as fait? Oui, euh, puis j'espère que ça leur, ça leur donne de l'espoir, de la motivation, euh, puis qu'un jour, ben, je puisse les croiser puis, euh, puis travailler avec eux. Puis euh, j'ai bien hâte à ce, à ce jour-là qu'on qu soit plus, puis euh, je pense qu'on... On a tous notre place dans le hockey, puis j'espère que ça va s'améliorer le peu à peu, puis, puis assez vite. Merci. We'll go next to Arpon Basu at The Athletic. Emily, congratulations. Thank you. Um, I, it was interesting to hear you speak about your, your point of view in terms of, you know, having a non-binary look and not considering yourself necessarily to be a woman first in hockey, but to be someone who's working in hockey. Yeah. Um, it's always a tricky thing when, <clears throat> when organizations, not only in hockey, but just in the world yeah. are looking to, I guess, diversify their, their workforce and, and bring in different perspectives. Um, and someone who's in your position could feel like maybe they're, they're, they're asking me to work for them because they're, they want to check a box or they want to 
they want to get that diversity. To what extent, what do you think of that? And, and to what extent did you need to hear from Vancouver about your, your hockey qualities more so than being a woman coming into this job? Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, the conversations that I've had with Vancouver um, never, we, we never even talked about the fact that I was a woman. When Jim called, it was about, I think you can fill this role and I think you can be great at it. Um, and we never even spoke about that, not once. Um, and I just didn't feel, and I never felt, you know, I, I've, I've known Jim through different interactions in my career, but um, I just felt like what he wanted was quality people uh, with quality vision and um, that could have a quality impact. And he thought that I was one of those people. So for me, if I would have thought that it was, like you said, the check a box or, um, you know, to have a PR move, I, I, I would have felt that from a mile away, I can tell you that much. Um, and so I never had that feeling uh, while I was talking to Vancouver. And, and yeah, I guess that's part of the reason also why I made this move. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. And with our final question, we'll go to Simone Servant at the uh, Canadian Press. Uh, salut, Emily. Uh, félicitations. Uh, première question pour toi. Je veux juste que tu me parles de la relation que tu avais avec uh, Jim Rutherford, uh, si tu l'avais déjà côtoyé en personne, ou si tu avais, évidemment, tu devais avoir parlé à Euh, avec lui concernant euh, tes, tes joueurs. Euh, Est-ce que tu as été euh, surprise de recevoir son appel, euh, de recevoir son offre? Euh, surprise, non. Euh, parce que je pense que je suis une personne qui est qualifiée pour ce genre de poste-là. Euh, Puis c'est toujours une personne que j'ai grandement respectée. Euh, je trouve qu'il y a une approche très professionnelle, euh, humaine. Puis je veux dire, son... Euh, ça affiche le, le prouve que c'est un gagnant puis euh, qu'il fait les, les choses de la bonne façon. Euh, donc, pour moi, c'est vraiment un honneur de, de, de travailler en, avec son leadership puis avec toute l'équipe qu'on va bâtir là-bas à Vancouver. Euh, Je suis vraiment excitée puis c'est vraiment un privilège pour moi là, de, de pouvoir apprendre d'une personne comme ça qui a, qui a tellement prouvé dans le hockey. Puis, euh, dernière, la dernière question, euh, on dit souvent dans, dans le monde de la politique, dans le monde de la gestion des sports, euh, que les, les femmes ont une façon un peu plus posée de voir les choses plus « out of the box euh, ». As-tu l'impression que c'est le début d'un changement de garde un peu dans la façon dont on approche euh, le hockey? Puis, vu, étant donné que c'est un monde qui est comme rempli de testostérone un peu, as-tu l'impression qu'il y a un changement de garde avec ta nomination aujourd'hui? Euh, je veux dire... Le, le temps va le dire. Je pense que je pense que tous les gens amènent des opinions puis des idées différentes. Euh, c'est juste, je pense que c'est important de, de, de créer des équipes euh, un, qui travaillent par comité, qui travaillent par, euh, en prenant des décisions ensemble, euh, puis en évaluant les, les, les choses qui se passent de tous les angles pour, pour s'assurer de prendre les bonnes décisions. Euh, c'est ce que je sens qu'on est en train de faire à Vancouver, puis c'est quelque chose dans lequel je veux faire partie. Euh, donc, je, je vais amener mes opinions, mes idées, puis euh, j'ai vraiment hâte de commencer. OK, that's all the time we have. Thanks so much to Emily Caspongay for taking the time to be with us this afternoon, and thank you all for joining us as well. Thanks, Emily. Thank you. Merci.